there's Kugler the cat. There he is saying hi. <laughs> and with that, as always, Kugler is the start of the show. Welcome to what we saw on HBO's Hard Knocks here on 12news.com. Cameron Cox, Lena Washington from her house. Real quick, shout out to Lena. She's the only one in this department that has made it for every one of these episodes. There's been always some things that happen. But Lena, Miss Consistent. And uh, I don't know what we got for you, Lena. I don't have a ribbon like they used to hand out in school. But if we did, you would get the perfect participation award. Yeah, perfect attendance. Maybe I'm the <laughs> hard knocks pro bowler of the 12 news oh, department. Do they you still know. go to Hawaii or no? No, they go to Vegas, which Vegas. is okay with me too. Um, <laughs> there we go. But I, I still haven't been to Hawaii either. But either way, yes. Uh, episode seven. <laughs> I mean, we we know what to expect every week, Cam. But sure. I'm I'm always just marvelled by the storytelling. Yeah. The Drama, the music, how it all just cinematically recaps what we watch in real time. And it's amazing. Paul Calvisi's voice sounds a whole lot better when you're bumping Christmas music, drama Christmas music right behind it. Or maybe it's I just said Tom it... Brady and J.J. Watt making Polly sound and look good <laughs> on film, right? Yeah, yeah. Episode 7 is crazy. We've... um been going at this for so long i will say I, I agree with you lena the storytelling is always great i think the episodes and the stories have got a little bit better as this kind of thing has gone on um throughout the year you know what i mean i, I would think the last couple of episodes have been really strong so yeah and i don't know if that's just because they have to find content and storylines somewhere when this team is not winning and there's nothing <laughs> on the line anymore sure. um but you know what i I love HBO dramas. Like I like their comedies, but it's their dramas. It's the wires. It's the house of dragons. It's the successions that really draw me in. And this is a drama. This is the drama that I've been sure. needing on a Sunday night, but it's on a Wednesday. So I'll take it. We'll take um, it. But, we don't know what yeah, day it is anyway. It's the holiday. Nobody knows what day it is. Nobody knows what the date is, what the day is. Very few people out about even know the time <laughs> of the day. So especially yeah. day was rainy. Yeah, it, it was an odd day here in the Valley, but I mean, nothing yeah. I think made this whole week any, I mean, it, an odd day really, because you actually heard from J.J. Watt addressing yeah. his retirement announcement, and you heard Liev Schreiber say in the show tonight, it's not public yet, but J.J. Watt will be sh retiring, announcing his retirement shortly after this game, so Again, I don't know how much they knew, how much was shared, how much that was woven into the post edit of this episode. Um, but we, you know what's funny is plenty we, of material. Sure, you know what's funny is um, shout out to one of our guys, Philip Matthews, as we were walking off the field the other night. Got a great shot of JJ, mm -hmm. and some was just up. You could just see it. You saw it in his eye. Like, this man is awfully emotional for another loss. And I know he takes losses hard, so I don't want to take away anything like that. But you just thought at first maybe his final home game here because right, you sure. thought he played as well into another contract. They probably weren't going to pay him that kind of money to come back for a team who knows what it's going to look like next year. So you maybe thought, man, this Valley kind of means something special, to him, which it does. I, I'll say that, which it does. He's embraced his city since he got here, he had his son here, you know, kind of a next chapter of his life. So I, I would think this Valley is always something special to J.J., but that's what you thought. You thought final home game. J.J.'s taking it kind of hard. And then you start thinking, you're like, maybe there's something else. Turns out there was a lot else, a lot else. J.J. Watt retiring, um, very young, still could do it, still could get another big contract. But Lena, I mean, we'll, we'll get to the episode, but – uh, you know, you could just, I'll say this, my main takeaway from listening to JJ today, time to turn the page. Like for him to say, I'm ready to focus my efforts, energy, thoughts, all kind of all that into something else, like his family, his son, whatever else, that just shows you this guy who is eight, sweat, blood, all that football his entire life at the beginning of his career was all about football. And now for him to say that, that that's a massive jump. And so it just shows you he's ready to do something else. Very at peace with the decision. And that's good to hear because, as you know, talk to a lot of people, not all athletes, when they move on from that juncture, can find that peace right away or sound that way when they make that announcement. It, it, it sounds that way. But, I mean, let's not kid ourselves when we've seen several athletes like 
the one of the main characters of tonight's episode, Tom Brady. Uh, retire and then unretire. So sure. you know the door. I'm sh- the door is open for JJ Watt. Any team he wants oh, to yeah. go to, he can go there if he so desires. If that is sitting on his heart after some time passes, but um, obviously the way he's playing as of late. I mean, I I call it a JJ Watt essence because I mean three sacks in one half. He's playing at such a high level that I'd imagine for an athlete like him and his wife, Kalia is also a high level athlete. So she can relate. She knows again, the finite time of of this. He mentioned that today, Lena. He was asked if um, he's going to make Phoenix his home. You know, they've kind of seemed to like it here in in a way. Um, And he wasn't sure. He said he hopes his wife goes back and plays soccer a little bit later on um, next year. So maybe they go, you know, I think she's under contract in Chicago. If I'm, if I'm not mistaken on that. So he wasn't sure where they were going to call their home base yet because it sounds like his wife wants to continue playing soccer. So that was that was interesting. Maybe he'll just be the ultimate dad, cheerleader, J.J. Watt style. Um, you know, it was funny. He, he also told another story of a teammate who was getting his wisdom teeth out. Make sure to go listen to that online because I won't do it justice. But at the beginning of the story, he mentioned I sent out the tweet and then had to take my son to his doctor's appointment. It was like, I just sent the biggest tweet of my life. And then, hey, baby, Koa, come on, let's roll, man. We got a, Dude, you no, got a doctor's you appointment. Just, yeah, tur- tur- you leave the phone. <laughs> I mean, that has a little note right at the doctor's office, probably no cell phones. So sure. he's good. Um, but yeah, I mean, they impact so much in this episode, Cam, from JJ to Buddha, again, playing on what we now know was a fractured shoulder yeah. Yeah. Uh, that, that it looks like happened in the fourth quarter of this game. But at the top of the episode, you have Vance Joseph. I mean, just well, again. Well, real quick, before you dive into all this, I just want to be transparent here. We are working on a JJ thing for Sunday. I was knee deep in it. And all of a sudden, I remember Hard Knocks was on. And I, I caught it about 30 minutes in. So you, like I said, dedication all the right. way. So fill, you're going to fill me in too as well. What, well yes, I, 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 I picked was... it up in the game. What happened in the first part of the episode? Yes. Uh, so I will bring you up to speed, Cam, uh, Vance <laughs> Joseph, talking about Buda Baker. I mean, just how effort and heart can never be measured when it comes to a Buddha and a JJ. And again, they had they looked back at the Denver game where they had a lead in the fourth quarter once again and blew it. So um, that was the defensive side, obviously, with Trace McSorley taking his uh playing in his first NFL start against Tom Brady, he, it kind of was sad actually, Cam. I mean, he's, he's in his apartment and he's had, he has all the pictures in the background and his whole family was at the game, but they're all located on the East coast. So he's saying, you know, sometimes it gets a little lonely. I come here and I'm by myself some days and I'm just by myself. And he just kept saying that. And I'm just wondering, man, you know, you got to get out and about, Trace. I mean, I'm sure that Buddha will take you out. JJ went sure. to Coach House. You know, one of your it's, one of your teammates it, will bring you out. You know, it's like people forget. Like, sure, they all these guys play professional sports, and we see a lot of fan comments from time to time where like somebody's doing something else, and you're like, oh, why ain't he in the playbook? Why ain't he studying this playbook? Let me tell you something. There's not a person on this planet that just is in their work 24-7. All of us got things we like to do. I like to golf. Lena hangs out with her cat. I mean, it's it's all the above, you know? Uh, La mom too, Miss Washington. The house too, Cam. I know, yeah. I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm sure Miss Washington is back there too. Um, and um, it's, it's just, it's very interesting that, you know, the, the guys are just like us. And so a lot of these guys come from all over the country and they move here. They don't have a lot here. Uh, maybe some of their friends are elsewhere and it's a new city. And, uh, while Trace has been here a while, you know, if he's stuck living by himself. It's, it's a different, you know, it did can get a little lonely at times. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, he literally said that multiple times. I, I did think it was really sweet that they had vid- baby video, <laughs> little Trace McSorla video from Christmas of the year 2000. We're oh. all worried about Y2K and Will Smith Millennium was playing and probably number one on the billboard. Um, and there's little Trace running count, around count. in a Washington jersey. As, remember, as a remember, you remember kid. TRL? You don't remember TRL? Oh, please. Don't, okay. even, don't even try me with the uh, VJs and the TRL. There we go. The, okay, okay, okay. All of that. Sure. Uh, but I did, I, I have been wanting to know, I haven't found the right time to ask, but in the quarterback's room and then at Trace's apartment, they always have a candle burning. So I wonder if that's a, a trace thing or if 
that's and what scent it is it looked like a salted caramel maybe <laughs> so i'm just curious like what what where that started and why it's specifically the quarterbacks and maybe specifically trace that that I need love, that to kind of go i love meetings. the detail i love the attention to detail the catch that we now this might be something we if if they're a candle person maybe we bring some candles Absolutely. give them some well, options Chris, you know christmas is already passed so sure. we'll have to wait for some other some other uh, gift giving event um, but then you get to we get the long awaited James Conner feature. Right. And as I said a couple episodes ago, I actually listened to his audio book. He did publish a book a couple years ago. Fear is a choice. And it just really detailed his, his story from his knee injury, his cancer diagnosis, his draft day. And I mean, both traces and James's draft day videos. They just give me chills every time, whoever it is. I mean, just seeing the emotion of the family and and those moments. And I love that James's was at a Buffalo Wild Wings and he said, you know, we're not going to switch up. Like, just because it's his draft day, we'll, we'll be so bougie. Like, we'll keep it at a Buffalo Wild Wings. But you get to meet his mom, go in the kitchen. They're watching the video together. Um, and, you know, you know how much his mother means to him and how yep. important family is. And to see that story told to people who might be unfamiliar with it. I think was definitely necessary. And as we wind down with this series, they had to get there sometime and, and Some Christmas point. is the best time to do it. Yeah. The uh, book is really good yeah. too, by the way, you're right. The book is, is phenomenal and very powerful. James, yeah. Very powerful. James. I mean, it, it, you know, the whole thing with James, just for what he's had to overcome, but his mindset through everything, I think everybody can learn something from James mm-hmm. Conner. Absolutely. And, and you hear Sean Jefferson talking to James Conner, talking about, you know, these valleys that we go through, this is just life. You know, football is going to teach you about life. And if you fold now, if you lay down now when, when the, you know, chips are stacked against you, that's what you're going to do in life, you know? And so, and James does is a testament to that, right? I mean, yeah. everything that he's over overcome in such a, at such a young age. Um, and then we get to the game, which, uh, you know, <laughs> I, I felt, I, it, it, we know what it looked like, right? You're watching it and, I thought they did a great overtime montage to the tens version of like Carol of the Bells or whatever. Sure, it was. I, I thought that was the best. Tom like Brady's it, it, driving it, and it's and almost it, like next year we need to recommend the NBC. That would have made that game ten times better. Oh like, man! You know, if you could have just pumped in that kind of Christmas uh, drama song throughout most of that fourth quarter in the second half, we'd have perked up a little bit. Because I'm not right. gonna lie. It's Christmas was great. I, I hope you had a great Christmas too, Lena, you and your family. But yes. uh, having that game that night where you could kind of relax in the morning, get up, show own pace, enjoy Christmas morning, have a have a good meal, uh, you know, just sit there, watch some football, get up, do some other things and have it. All NFL games should be at five o'clock in the afternoon. That's just my they should just change. We need to change that right now. All NFL games should be at five That's o'clock. That's literally in the afternoon. a multi-billion dollar yeah. idea. Cam. Yeah, five o'clock <laughs> in the afternoon. That way, give everybody all day to do stuff, football, and then it was it was just kind of perfect uh, that he. But I will say, after kind of chilling most of the day, <laughs> having to start moving and all that stuff, I, I felt like taking a nap about well, second quarter. Well, imagine how Antonio Hamilton felt. He's got his newborn son. He's got his mom opening her Uggs. She's he's got his little babies opening. I mean, they want to put the batteries in and start playing with them things. He's, Daddy's got to go to work now. I yeah, mean, he's like that. Dad, Dad's got to go after get after the goat. Like y'all, we just can't be playing right. these games. You know, we can't right. be doing Daddy's Fortnite really and yeah, we can't be doing all that. It's good stuff. Yeah. Uh, I loved the the camera on the McSorley family. And, I did too. Uh, uh, you know, Trace has talked about how much his dad has played a role in his life, and you can just see their support. Um, there were several moments, several cutaways to Cliff, just, you know, that and the F word, ugh. I mean, I'm like, dude, yeah, Cliff, I feel you. That was that Brittany. was us in the press box, too. Did, the, did you heard they got, a, they, got a, they got a play named Brittany. I love that. Uh, <laughs> I, mean, I wonder if it's Spears, Murphy, which it's, Brittany we're Lena, talking it's, about. It's, it's so funny what football teams and 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 we came i mean we had weird words too like weird things coaches try and make something most of the time it's the first letter and it's the first yeah. letter that means something that that they hope to try and translates over to like a play call um I, who knows where britney came from like why britney why not bob why not something else but britney so it's, maybe we should ask cliff that what does that mean 
Yeah, I'll have to look it up. I don't know if that play was successful. In it was not. It was <laughs> so not. let's let's ixnay on the Britney. Um, but another like attention to detail thing is at halftime, Trace McSorley likes to have a an encrustable and some gummy bears for, for his uh, halftime fuel, which uh, I've had many an encrustable in my life. Um, but I I just found that interesting. And gummy I, bears are always for the win. Always oh. for the win. For sure, depending on, you know, what flavor it is, of course. <laughs> oh, um, and then, and then of course, we get the moments of levity from JJ. He's like, you know, when he retires, he Cliff said he could go to Hollywood. Yeah, he better get to, like, the comedy cell or the comedy spot because he's, like, delivering jokes every week on this on this series. I mean, he's sure. talking to Zayvon like, man, if you had any hands, if you had any hands whatsoever, you would have had a pick after this, uh, this you know, second year linebacker that just made a great play you know uh he's still cracking him and cracking with uh, zach atwin talking about how much food he's gonna eat when he gets home how much eggnog he's gonna drink and it's like you know he's <laughs> chopping it up with tom brady tom's chirping with him back and forth you know that inside move never you know it's hard to stop and, hard to stop you know, yep it's it's again two future hall of famers you know playing on christmas day in our backyard uh, and you get those moments where, you know, you obviously root for JJ to come through with the win in that situation, but, uh, you see the respect there after the game between him and Tom Cliff and Tom, uh, you know, him wishing trace good luck. Uh, um, yeah. but boy, boy camp. I hold up but right before I know where you're going with this right before okay. I just want to mention Buddha. Uh, because we touched on it just a little bit. We saw the play where they think he got hurt late in the fourth quarter. Leonard um, Fournette's big fourth fourth quarter gain. Yeah. And that I think the, led to the Rashad White shadow ASU touchdown. Yeah. Uh, and the, the big though thing with Buddha, it's it's fractured shoulder just sounds brutal for him not to feel it or whatever is crazy to me. He thought um, it was a bruise, a contusion. Yeah, he just thought, oh, it just sore, whatever, kept pointing to it. Um, two things with Buddha, though, I just want to mention real quick. A couple of plays before the game-winning field goal, he is shoulder first in Leonard Fournette's chest with the shoulder that he apparently just fractured, <laughs> trying to make a play, full speed, 250-pound running back, definitely outweighs Buddha, and Buddha's flying in there trying to make a play, pops right up. Um, if that doesn't scream football player, I don't know what does. Also, I love it after the game. He did a long walk on the field, kind of behind the bench. He, he actually he passed us when we were yeah. getting ready for our broadcast, Cam, yeah. and he's, you know, fans are shouting his name. He threw a headband to a fan. He wasn't yeah. rubbing his shoulder at that time. Not at all. He was flex. He moment. was flexing for fans in pictures, Lena. So I just I yeah. want to point that out there. Like that's a real one there, and I can always appreciate when players do stuff like that. Like, listen, I get it. They put so much into these these games, and it's a it's a massive physical toll. And the last thing you want to do afterwards is probably put on a smile after it's been a tough year at another loss. What do you say? I don't know. Uh, but to, to come out and say thank you to a fan to the fans like that when yes. you when I know he's in obvious pain is just is a real one. Hope Buddha stays here for a very long time, and uh, it just shows you that you know build some pieces around him, and that team could be pretty special when it's led by him. Man, he's just come such a long way. So, but I know where you're going now because when we when when they showed some of those locker room shots, I was like, oh, the foreshadowing. Oh, buddy, you could hear a pin drop. Yeah, it was tense. You see the the rack focus of Michael Bidwell watching Cliff deliver the post game message. Well, he was and- waiting. He was waiting for Cliff to say something, and so that's what that's what was such good uh, photography there. Um, you know, it's Michael. So Cliff Cliff looked like he was crying. By the way, Cliff looked like he was a little upset there. I couldn't tell, but it looked like it. But Michael's like staring at it, and then they pan off Vance Joseph in the background, yes. shaking his head over to James Connor. Shaking his head. Um, whoo, they kept showing Michael in the background. It's very the camera shots seem very strategic to make sure Michael looking at Cliff like that. Um, well, well even him a- walking into the stadium wasn't very merry and bright when <laughs> he was walking in with the red blazer and wishing the camera Merry Christmas. Sure. I don't know how holly jolly he was feeling at that moment, and he certainly. Uh, was feeling the weight of that lump of coal <laughs> that the Cardinals, that his team delivered on national television when they had sure. it. And Mike Evans was chirping at Antonio Hamilton saying, y'all had it. Y'all had it. And he knew it too. And uh, yeah, so does so does the owner. 
and he's taking note because a lot of free agents are going to be looking for places to to call home in a couple a of weeks, in a couple in a couple months. Yeah. Yep. But boy, uh, again, I, I love the tension actually in the locker room because we don't get to be there for those moments, right? So it's a little peek behind the curtain, a little, you know, we're opening the door that we don't get to go into until a certain moment um, yep. after games. But, you know, at the end, I, I love that they kept it light with these guys at the end of the day. They have their family here. It's Christmas. You know, they're, you know, they're humans too. They want to go home and enjoy the holiday. And it it, it never feels like a holiday for really us and, and media because it doesn't stop. We don't get sure. breaks either. And, uh, but we obviously don't sacrifice our bodies to that extent. Not, as, not as to that NFL extent. Player. Not uh, to that it, It'll yeah. be interesting to show what they show from JJ next week. Uh, mm -hmm. I know we always end these kind of looking ahead. That'll be interesting to show. Um It'll be interesting to see what the Cardinals can do next next in Atlanta. Like I, you know, I just hope for JJ's sake. I hope for people like Colt. I hope for you know, a guy like Kelvin Beecham, who who was on. It seems like one toe left. They be so beat up now after a full season playing the whole time. Um, you just want to see them do some good things towards the end of the year. You want to see JJ go out on top. Mm -hmm. Maybe have a big sack game. Uh, you want to see Colton this offense move the ball. It's really kind of moving. Listening to Colton McCoy this week, dude just cares. Like, I don't know. You you cannot, like, not listen to Colt. And, like, no matter what you feel about this team and how bad it's been and blah, blah, blah. But, like, you listen to a guy like Colt, and you would think, like, they're playing for the Super Bowl. It's just it's just cool to listen to. Yeah. Um, maybe Kyler makes an appearance at some point. I know he's set to have surgery so. here soon. Um, but I wonder how soon till he comes back around or what anything like that. And um, you just want to see what this team could do moving forward. I just, I think it's interesting though. Uh, Cliff, uh, I've said all year long that I don't think he's going to get fired. I still don't think that. But at this point, Lena, you and I have seen so much with this team, and we've seen so much through the, the league with yeah, like, and, you know these these coaches haven't signed massive extensions but they're still sure. in the middle of the season and new to these teams and they're not winning and they are without a job and now. without a job and so you just have to wonder i just i just don't know i like i said i don't think he's going to get fired i get it i see why i could see both sides of it uh, my gut just tells me no but then again we've seen so many things with this team who knows at this point and at this point there's a lot with this team then we have to wonder about what's going to happen next. You know, yes. they got up to the 30 free agents. Do you trade DeAndre? Hop? Those are like real questions. Do you trade DeHop? Do you blow this thing up? What's the offensive line going to look like? What's the defensive line going to look like? They need some more linebackers. They're going to need to re-sign some cornerbacks. Like the list of things. This Buddha said it in that huddle. Two more games left, and this team's going to look different. He's this right. This team is never going to be the same again. Never, is, never, and, and he's he's absolutely right. And that right. could be multiple levels, starting with the GM, yeah, top to multiple bottom. Level. Yep, multiple level. Yeah. All right, that'll do. It. Where's Cuckoo? Did he get bored of us? Did he leave oh, already? No, he's here. Where you oh snap! He hung around and listened to the entire thing. There we go. Cougar as in Ryan Coogler, director of Fruitvale Station, Black Panther, Creed. Just to make that clear, it's Coogler, C O O G L E R. And former gotcha. Sac State wide receiver. So uh, there you go. You can All be a multi talented athlete and, and director one of these days, kids. <laughs> All the above. Thanks for logging on to 12news.com, guys. We'll see you next week.